Hey, this is Danny Marin, you know, with Total Gavone Clothing and the Northside King. <laughs> Here to talk with Frankie about collecting and everything cool about toys. I'm here with Danny. Danny, how you doing? What's up, buddy? How you doing? Oh, I'm good. I'm I'm so stoked to do this. I want to start doing these interviews. I'm interested to talk to other collectors and nerds and nerds all walks of life. It's just incredible. It's like I I think I came into contact with you over nerd shit before music or anything really. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. I, are you me and you obviously we're liking a lot of the same pages, uh, a lot of the same stuff and. I started seeing your name, and I don't know if I friended you or you friended me, but uh, right. Well, I, I knew we, I knew we would get along well. <laughs> oh my God! I, uh, uh, your book. I, I bought the book, ordered it from you, but then I, uh, anybody that buys that book, they got to get the audio book because it's just, it's just so much better to actually hear it from yeah, your yeah, voice, yeah. and and you get to you elaborate a little bit on some of the stories. But as I was reading it, going to the gym, I was like, if I would have grew up in the same town and like New Jersey as Danny, we would have been best friends. Yeah, yeah, we were. I was. Uh, I definitely was into a lot of shit that uh, uh, I had a few friends that were into, but the majority of them, you know, they they weren't. It was it was a whole different world. <laughs> right, and I was uh, like today, everybody's into everything, but back then, in the early '80s, mid '80s. Not everybody liked Predator. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you go to school, like, I saw Predator. It's like, you're stupid. It's like, what? Yeah, well, everybody was into, like, you know, Johnny B. Good. With, right. Uh, with, and I'm not knocking a movie. It's a cool movie. But right. They it, were in the. Know, it was not what I, I was more interested in First Blood. I was more interested in Friday the 13th. I was more interested in Predator or. Uh, right. You know, uh, what, what, what Van Damme movie was coming out or Seagal or. You know, like I watched that stupid movie Cyborg so many times, uh, or, or uh, uh, I mean Total Recall and 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 and, and, and every Arnold Schwarzenegger movie over and oh. over. Raw Deal, Commando, uh, Running Man. You know, I mean that that was my that was my shit. Yeah, uh, you just sparked a memory. Remember that movie with Joe Piscopo and Treat Williams? They're the cops Dead and. Deep. Dead Heat. They were going after Vincent Price and Joe. I think they're like people. They they die and then they come back as zombies, but they're really strong and stuff. Hey, kill this guy, would you? <laughs> but that but that whole era of movies, you know, going to the video store and renting movies and uh, waiting for the new releases. Fangoria had a huge that had a huge play on what I was looking for. That's how I knew about Rawhead Rex and gosh, Layer of the White Worm. All these weird. Like European well, movies. Yeah, Fangoria was like our, our, that was, there was no internet. I mean, that was our doorway into uh, what was coming out. I mean, you know, those, the video stores, I, we had a video store in my town called Palmer Video. It was a mom and pop store, had the brown cases for the, the tapes. Right. We had the, uh, you know, the cover on the shelf. You take the cover over to the spot, you pull the tape out of his, uh, his racks. And, um, you know, I kept a notepad and I used to write down every movie that I saw. I wrote right. down all the action movies, all the horror movies. And he let me rent all kinds of rated R shit when I was little. Nice. You know, old school the mom and pop guy. But, um, you know, I, I, I was just, uh, I collect a lot of those Fangorias. I know you do. I had the whole collection prior to a fire I had years ago. Oh, so man. I've, been, I've been playing the fill-in game. But, you know, I, I look through them and I read them. And it's funny because you see news like the new Adams Family coming out. It's going to be starring Cher as Morticia Adams. Right. You know, and you're like, no. This is the, vi the video Dead Zone or the video Eye of Dr. Cyclops. Yeah. That's yeah, when yeah. They, they would talk about the new movies coming out. Or, or yeah, that's crazy. About, they talked about 
how John Carpenter failed so poorly with the thing and how he did so bad at the box office. Wow. And John Carpenter's career is like on, on, on the edge of like, that's like the fucking most legendary movie now, you know, she right. probably failed box office, but, uh, you know, so did Big Trouble in Little China and all these other ones that, you know, it's... they came back with a, uh, with a vengeance, but yeah, the thing it got, I, this, there was, you know, the, the Fangoria has got like the article on the thing, uh, you know, the whole, the, I think they had a cover uh, page, actually, with the guy's yeah. face. And yeah, then, yeah. Uh, but then, like, the issue after it was, like, how it failed at the box office. That's you know, insane. Like, it's just a bad movie. <laughs> okay. It, it takes a while. It's like what Marty yeah. McFly said. I know you don't like this, but your kids are going to love yeah, it. Your kids are going to love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you have a, a rad collection. When did you start collecting? Um, was it way back when, or was there something like I had stuff, but it wasn't until I saw those pictures of Kirk Hammett with all his stuff, and he's like the first check he got from Metallica, he blew it all on vintage toys, like all the Shogun Warriors and stuff. And I was like, oh, I can do that and be an adult and do it. And then from there on, it's like, mom, I'm I'm a collector. I'm collecting this stuff. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I, I really, um, I, you know, I, I had a lot of toys when I was a kid that I had saved. And I had uh, brought with me to, from New Jersey to Arizona. Uh, there was a lot of toys that I burned on fire and blew up, I, uh, you know, with fireworks and, you know, destroyed. I remember I had a My Pit Monster that, you know, I took him out in the back and shot him with a million fucking arrows. Oh, my God. You know? uh, yeah, we... I got older. He was like my best friend a couple years prior. But after that, I got older and I whacked him. Yeah, we took fire. We took firecrackers to our Shogun Warrior Godzilla back then. Yeah, and that thing is worth a bundle today. Yeah, you know? I actually I went on a Facebook group. It was an auction group. Uh, somebody invited me on there, and they had one. So it was the first thing I ever did an auction for, and I won it for like fifty bucks or something like that. And then I got off there because I tried a couple of times and lost my ass every time. So I was like, I'm just gonna fold and split. So yeah, I, you're I like actually, Kenny Rogers, I, no one to fold. Right. <laughs> the gambler. Yeah, right on. Uh, but yeah, that was one of the, one of the things we had as a kid. And to think of the things that we destroyed, it's just because I know you guys were a little firecracker happy, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got a videotape somewhere of the, uh, the He-Man, uh, the vehicle that had the thing that came off. They used to fly. On oh, right. Them. The green uh, thing? Yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah, yeah. The little, the little button on the back that shoot the little red uh, dart out the top. I, so I have a I have a video somewhere of a guy on a claymation. The guy I made out of clay, and he's sitting on the little thing, just on the front <laughs> part of it. He's by a tree, and firecrackers are going up, and Man of War is playing in the background. And all of a sudden, <laughs> it, just goes, <laughs> it just blows up, you know. Uh, but but That's it, awesome. I tell you, eBay really was um, the big change for me because I started, you know, I, eBay came out, and I started looking up all these old toys I used to have. And things I wanted to re-get, and I started recollecting them. And and then, you know, McFarlane started coming out with all these cool figures. Uh, it really kind of put me back into the realm of collecting newer stuff in the mix of all the older stuff. Um, you know, I remember I, I, eBay, I, I got every Mad Ball uh, nice. that was made. And I had a display with them, like a glass display like you'd have baseballs. But they were all, every single Mad Ball, including the, one, the original Crackhead version. Which nice. he changed his name because his name was Crackhead at first. He just had cracks, cracks in the head. But their parents went, you know, ape shit, and they and Crackhead wasn't a cool. Day. Hey, my look, I got a Crackhead. <laughs> you know, so, those things are rad. Yeah. So yeah, so I, you know, I, I started filling into all that stuff all over again, and then, uh, uh, and then I had a fire. Oh man! And I, when I tell you, uh, at that time, my house was like a toy house because it had been like now like 10 years of eBay and Amazon came out and Toys R Us was coming out with new toys and I was going to garage sales and I was like oh some guy had every single Reservoir Dog figure in the in the plastic and they were and he sold them for like five bucks a piece I oh, bought them all you know wow every single one of them so I mean the whole house had toys all over the place and uh, and I have nice cabinets and displays. Forget about Blu-rays and DVDs. 
and then uh, you know that happened, and then you know I started collecting in a little bit of a different way after that. I, I, I went from action figures for the most part to bobbleheads. Oh, nice. And I went with the bobbleheads because a lot of my figures weren't standing on shelves well and they would fall and they would break and I would lose pieces. Right. I think the one that set me off the most, and I have, I have two of them up there. I'm going to kind of bring you around a little bit here. Uh, I don't know if I could turn this around. But uh, I'll bring you up top here. Uh, let's see, if I can... see those two Terminators there? Yeah. So it's the same figure, but McFarlane was known to change shit. So if you ran out of heads from one, he put another head on the other. So one of those figures is an Arnold Schwarzenegger with sunglasses. And one is an Arnold Schwarzenegger without sunglasses. Because <laughs> he must have had extra heads from the other and just popped it on with the figure. Right. But what that was the figure that set me off on. And meanwhile, I got two of them again. Uh, it set me off from collecting action figures because the way that figure, he stands on a display and he's got this fucking herky turkey arm like this. Right. And he, the coffin goes on his shoulder and it's got a pin in the coffin and the pin sits on the shoulder so the pin's in there he holds the coffin the coffin's full of the weapons because it's terminator 3 and the fucking thing fell off the shelf and he broke and the pin broke and then i had arnold schwarzenegger oh you know the stupid <laughs> arm and i couldn't put the coffin back on the arm so it just looked like he was like hey oh you know like it was so you know i had that prior to the fire but after that uh, I started saying, you know what? I want one of my friends bought me after the fire because I had a few bobbleheads, but uh, you can kind of see it in this shelf here. Inside this shelf, if I can, I have an exorcist bobblehead in there. Oh, nice! So the bed shakes and her head shakes. Oh, it's the whole bed that's red, it's a cool one. That was the first one that I got. My friend gave it to me, and it didn't. It wasn't like wobbly on a shelf. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe I'll start collecting bobbleheads because there's a lot of cool bobbleheads out there. And I had prior to the fire one shelf that had Freddy Krueger, uh, Pinhead, um, uh, Michael Myers, and, uh, Jason Voorhees. I think I had a Captain Spaulding on it. I can't remember. I had a few. Uh, so I went back to the bobbleheads, and then that grew out of control. Uh, as you can see <laughs> behind me, I mean, there's shelves of bobbleheads, and there's awesome. a fucking boat, boatload of them. And some of them are like, you know, like if you look up above there, those are all like horror-related, you know? Right. Then I got a shelf there that's like Marvel or Star Wars. And that's awesome. They're over here. There's more around here behind me. I got some on this shelf. How many do you have total? Do you know? I think I counted like 250 bobbleheads in here. God dang. Uh, That's red. More. And, I, and I recently sold a bunch off because I just had too much and I was running out of room. Uh, like I moved in the other room and to, my wife has been slowly allowing me to slip some of the stuff in other rooms. For the <laughs> most part, it's all in this room. Uh, but I, I had in the other room. I have all uh, the lost bobbleheads. Uh, oh, nice! They're all hard resin. They're really cool. It's odd they never made a Kate one, but they made uh, what's his name? Uh, he's playing the new Grandpa Munster in uh, in Zababa Hotep. Um, chubby. Oh, guy, uh, uh, oh God! Uh, you know what I'm talking about. He's he's in Caveman. He was in Dudes. Bad. It was in Bad Dudes or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They made a bobblehead for that guy, but they didn't make a cake bobblehead. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I only have no. one. I only have one bobblehead. That's one a zombie, a faulty zombie one. I got that too, and it broke. Oh no way! And I think they only made five hundred of that one. Really? Uh, I and I and I knocked him off the shelf, and he broke into a million pieces. And I had to throw them out, so there's only 499 of them out there now. Oh, man. 
That full maybe tool I had to, I kept maybe the I box. Maybe I hook up with so this cool. one. <laughs> I kept the box for that. It was so cool. Yeah, that's what I was just looking for. It's like I have that box, but it's I think it's over there in the uh, hot water heater area. <laughs> I, I like as of now, I, I'm not opening up as many bobbleheads anymore. Uh, if they're like something a little collector, like I have that uh, uh, Jimmy Gestapo one, uh, Jim, Jimmy G from Murphy's Law. Oh, that I kept in the box. Um, what else is in the box? Uh, I have an ALF one that Funko made. and I may have opened that out of the box if I got that years ago, but it's now hard to find one in the box and it sells for a little bit more. So I kept that out in the box. Were you ever a uh, in the box only, or were you? Do you have you always open stuff? I know people have debates over keeping it in the package and opening it. I'm an open it up guy, you know. And my my niece said to me the saddest toy is a toy that's still in the box. That's crazy. And, and it really made me think of that. I mean, I got a few things still around this office. I have the SOD figure in the box. I have the uh, the the agnostic front uh, eliminator one. From right. Super Seven, I kept that in the box. Um, there's a lot of Arnold Schwarzenegger stuff behind the bobbleheads there. Nice. Uh, that are in the box, like this one here. This one you can't remove from the box. Uh, this one, my buddy just gave me this week. It's the Arnold Schwarzenegger one, but it's got Apollo Creed's arm and cardboard right there. That is that is so rad. Yeah. I mean, yeah well, what's I that? Take that out of the box. What size is that? Is that an eight inch? Uh, I think so. When I first saw it, I thought it was an eighteen inch, like the like the other Dutch you got that I need in my collection, like crazy. Yeah, that one's there. That one right there, that Dutch. So I think this is an eight inch. It doesn't say, but it looks like it's eight inches. Um, I uh, the only thing that outside, and I really haven't been buying much bobbleheads anymore because this room kind of blew up, unless it's, like, something that I really need to have. Like, uh, Room Morgue put out a um, Vincent Price one, I think, not too long oh, ago. So I bought that. Uh, Elvira had one not too long ago, so I bought that. If there's, like, something that's really compelling to me, there was a time where, like, I would just be like, oh, Hulk. I need that Hulk. I don't have that Hulk. Right. Now I have, like, three Hulks over there, you know? <laughs> Uh, or, or I have two Doctor Dooms, you know. So uh, there was a time I was buying, you know, just to fill in. I wanted Funko before they got into pops. They really did a lot of cool bobbleheads. Uh, right. Head knockers had a lot of cool ones. Uh, there a lot of companies that were, were were putting them out, and then right it just got out of hand. So I, I pulled the reins back. You know. Did uh, you open that? Did you open that can of worms? Uh, collecting pops, pop figures. No, the only pops I have, um, I, cause I, the only figures that I'm currently trying to stick with with buying, unless something super cool comes out and compels me, uh, like that SOD figure, how could I not have that, you know? Yeah, for uh, real. But the only pops that I have, I have uh, a Predator Mud Dutch Mud one. Oh, nice. Uh, I have uh, a T-800 pop. For you know, the predator one. I have an actual predator one up there on that shelf. I have a white castle one my buddy gave me. Uh, it's got like a white castle box on a little pop guy's head. Oh, and, wow. Uh, <laughs> and I have uh, an atom bomb one from Garbage Pail Kids because I actually oh. had atom bomb tattooed on my chest. That's awesome. I know you're a big Garbage Pail Kids. So is my yeah, wife. She, yeah, wants yeah. To, she wants to get them in her armpit tattoos. I uh, I want to get another garbage pail kid. My mother's name is Teresa, and when I was a kid, I used to tease her with messy Tessie all the time. <laughs> uh, like I'm not messy. She used to get all mad, but I want to get messy Tessie with the with the snot, and it says mom and this dripping snot. That's my awesome. mother's really not into that, but uh, it might have <laughs> still might have to happen. Yeah, the only pops I have, I have the uh, Bruce Eaton Quint Jaws one, yeah, and then the and then the Jaws one. Like the poster art one that came with the T-shirt, and I've never even opened that one. But I don't. I some of my friends go nuts on them. It's just too much. There's too many different things to collect. Now I am actively collecting Arnold Schwarzenegger figures, so 
Yeah. I, I have a lot of those. Uh, uh, and if I, if I go somewhere uh, and I, and I go to a store and I stumble upon like any old last action hero figures, cause mm -hmm. there's a shitload of those. I'll grab them. I got a few, I got a really cool shelf. I'll show you. I don't know if you can see this stuff when I bring you over there, but this shelf here. Let's see if I can get you in there. It's all Arnold stuff. Oh, that's killer. Just all different last action heroes and and that. And you know, obviously it goes down to more Arnold stuff here. You know. There's more Arnold shit here. Oh, those Conans are sweet. Yeah. I, um, and the, so the figures I've been collecting, and I really got into, like, these movie books I'm all about right now. Um, like, they got these hardcover cool books. Like, uh, yeah, let me grab one for you. Like this Ghostbusters book. Oh, wow. Uh, this is an example. Um. Inside Editions puts it out. It's got all kinds of cool, like, bonus stuff, behind-the-scenes stuff, uh, art, stuff that comes out of the book that you can take out. Here's a preview card inside here. Oh, nice. The preview, the preview card is what they gave the people at the theaters when they were doing the previews. Like, ah. it says, like, like, please indicate which character was your most favorite, second favorite, and third favorite. So you can vote. So when they made the trailer... Do they put more Peter Venkman, or do they put more Egon, more Egon, or or Dana Barrett? Like how do you know? Right. These, these, That's crazy. They're cool. I got a Jurassic Park one, the Back to the Future one, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Uh, I got these really cool Alien hardcover books recently from Titan Books. So I got, I've been collecting a lot of the books lately. Right. Are you a fan of uh, extras and DVDs, Blu-ray, all the making ofs and documentaries? I am, um, but I, I slowed down on the Blu-ray collection uh, and, the, and the DVDs uh, physical stuff a lot more through the years, and I got more into the digital codes. So I'm in all these groups on Facebook where these guys, you know, they get a new DVD and they take their digital code and they put it up on uh, on Facebook, you know, not the code, but you know, hey, I got this code for two bucks or three bucks. Right. And all these guys are buying and selling codes and trading codes. And I got a Voodoo account that has almost 2,000 movies in it at this point, you know. Jesus. Awesome. And it's cool because I can take it anywhere I want to go. Right. Uh, you know, I mean, I still buy movies in physical form. If something new comes out that I want or something cool, like, you know, like, for example, like this Batman uh, nice Blu ray box set of the original Batman. You know, I, I bought that and it came with a digital code as well, which is funny because I've only watched the DVD of it like once, but I've watched the digital <laughs> version a million times because you don't have to go get the discs, put them in there. But you know, the streaming is still not as strong digitally. Like when I popped that in, I got a 4K. Uh, player in the living room, 4K TV, and when I pop that Batman Blu-ray in there, it, it still upscales it a little higher than the Blu-ray version, and nice. the colors are unbelievable. I mean, it looks way better like that on physical media. Right. But I'm not, you know, I'm really not watching. No. My, my wife's in the living room right now. She's watching Housewife, or I don't know what she's watching on the big TV right now. I, when I get done with you, I'm going out on a patio. I got a 42-inch TV on the patio. Nice. I got a Roku that's got all my digital movies and my Netflix and Hulu and all that shit. Uh, I'll light a cigar, and I'll be watching TV on a patio. So chances are me being able to you know watch much after work and pop a DVD in. I got all these wonderful DVDs and Blu-rays, but... I don't really watch them. <laughs> it's, you know. Right. Well, yeah, I have a massive collection. I barely touch them. Uh, when I do, when I paint model kits, if it takes me a few days, I'll order, like I did some zombie kits. So I ordered the zombie on Blu-ray with the 4K and couldn't believe the difference from the really old copy that I had 
Yeah, no, that, you know, that movie looks tremendous. Oh, it's so good. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I have it on Blu-ray. I mean, some of these blue, just the Blu-rays alone, I have brain damage up there. Nice. Uh, and there's a lot of movies that are not available digitally either still. I mean, uh, right. a perfect example is Revenge of the Nerds. Oh, really? The original Revenge of the Nerds is not available digitally. Porky's just came available within like the last year and a half. It came up on Amazon or Apple. It came up on Apple first. Apple had it. I bought all three movies right away because it wasn't available. Then Amazon must have licensed it. Now you can watch it for free on Amazon. Uh-huh. But uh, but I, but I mean I have them in my my iTunes or Apple movie digital collection because I got different movies on there than I have in other ones. And, that really surprises me with Revenge of the Nerds. When, when that movie came out, especially when it came out on VHS, it was the, sh- the movie to watch. All your big. friends get together and laugh your ass off. Bachelor Party is another one. How All right. Bachelor Party not be like a, a movie that's commonly found. There's, there's a lot of movies like that that, that that you'd be surprised. Zombie is another one. You're not going to get Zombie on Voodoo or Netflix or anywhere. If you want right. to watch full, uh, that full, some of the Fulci movies you can find. Uh, on Apple, like House House by the Cemetery. Oh, right on. I think is on there, or Black Cat. I think I bought on. Uh, um, I bought on uh, Apple. I think uh, a while back, but uh, for the most part, uh, you know, you can get you, the majority of movies you'll be able to get. But there's still movies that you and I are gonna like that you know are not gonna be found, and they're really doing a good job with them today. I mean, I haven't bought Alligator yet. And I think we oh, talked about it. Dude, it is it is so worth it to have it. Because, you know, as a kid watching that, you'd watch it every time it was on TV, you know, before cable. And then they put it out, so I had to get it. I wish the poster was the – it came with a poster. I wish it was the original poster. But other than that, it's great. All the extras are awesome. Brian Cranston was one of the techs on the special effects. That's Uncredited. Funny. There's a there's an extra feature on the on the Blu-ray of him talking about it, how he he was in charge of filling the guts into the alligator that they exploded in the end. So that's <laughs> a, who knew that? I didn't I didn't know that till I got that. So that's any so little he nugget. Worked, from, he worked with Robert Forrester, obviously, much earlier with the alligator. You know? He's got a whole story about it. It's amazing how he he got on the bus and Robert Forrester sat beside him. And this is when Brian was nobody. And they had this nice little conversation. Then years later, they met on Breaking Bad. And uh, Brian asked him if he remembered it. He was like, nope, I don't remember. <laughs> he didn't remember it at all. Pretty funny. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and when you see some of these movies, like Frank and Hooker um, on Blu-ray, <laughs> the colors look so much cooler. Like, like I, I was really blown away by brain damage. You know, with the, hey, Brian, Brian, you know, like that little worm. Right. Uh, I mean, I watched that movie a million times as a kid, and I had it on VHS, uh, and it was fucking shitty from being watched over and over. <laughs> and the right. color, the color was gone on it. It just was all. When you see it on Blu-ray, uh, you know today, I mean, with the lightning and the little neurons going on in the brain, it just what a difference. Oh, nice. So there are some movies I'm still buying, you know. I'll buy Alligator, you know. Uh, I uh, seem to buy movies I've already had, but I just, I don't know. Like I bought uh, a movie that really fucked with me when I was little was Shockwave with, oh, yeah, uh, with Peter, the, Peter the, Cushing and the Nazi zombies. Nazi guys, yeah. And I, I bought a bus and was painting it, so I ordered it. And then I was like, so many people dog on that movie, and I think it's awesome. But no, I think I it's, just, it's, a it's nostalgia. It's a movie Lake. That's the, the other Nazi uh, return from the dead. Uh, I think it was Zombie Lake, it's called. Yes. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Not yeah, as good. I, I, have I, that, I actually have that on DVD. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nazi zombies are always cool. Real Nazis suck, but those, it's, I don't know why. It's just like double well, evil or something. Well, they're the worst in the world, so to see them come back, the worst kind of characters there, you know? Right. It's like you... Like I want to collect all the Nazi zombie stuff I can, but I'm like, am I? Is this a line cross here? I'm not sure. Does it cancel out? Cause, I don't know. A little funny, but yeah, I mean, you know, there's some movies like like Gone with the Pope. You're, you're never uh, gonna find that movie on a streaming service, you know. What is uh, that? 
It's called Gone with the Pope. Uh, it's about this guy who decides he wants to kidnap the Pope and get a dollar from every Catholic around the world <laughs> uh, to kick in so they'll release the Pope. It's oh, not wow. as good of a movie. The guy who made this, uh, uh, Duke Mitchell, he was kind of like a crazy uh, B-movie mob movie guy. He, oh, nice. His, his better movie is Ma Murder Mafia. Mafia murder, mafia style, or mafia massacre, or mafia <laughs> murder massacre. I don't know. It was something like that. That movie happened to be the best. He was a guy that came into this town and tried to take over, and he's his father's from the old country. And is that one's really cool. This nice. one's pretty good. It's a good concept, but uh, Grindhouse uh, releasing put it out. But yeah, I mean, you know, this uh, the film was lost. I think Grindhouse releasing finished it and put it out. Nice. The guy died before it was ever done. Mm. Uh, it's not going to be on iTunes anytime soon. <laughs> now, uh, as far as collecting, when you were doing bands full time, uh, doing tours and stuff, was there ever an instance where you were out and about in a city and you saw something like, son of a bitch, I have to have that and I don't have the funds to get it? Was that ever an issue? Did you ever see anything like that? You know, on tour, I really didn't see a lot of stuff like that because we were, we were in a van and, like, it wasn't like we had daytime time to, like, go out and see a whole lot of stuff. We, you know, you, when, you're in a, when you're in a tour bus, you play a show, you hang out at the venue, you, you get done, you get on that tour bus, the tour bus driver drives all night long, you stay up for a little while, you hang out, you go to bed. When you wake up on the tour bus at 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning, you're most likely in another city already. And the tour bus driver at that point is going to sleep. He's going to a hotel for daytime sleep because he's going to drive all night long. But when you're in a van, you know, you get done playing, we're like, all right, well, let's drive till like 3 o'clock in the morning. We'll find a, a Walmart parking lot. We'll sleep for like three hours. We'll get up. Hopefully there's a McDonald's in there. We can wash up real quick and uh, eat, eat a right. or, or egg McMuffin and hit the road. And then, you're, <laughs> and then you're driving another three, four, five hours to get to the venue. And if you get there early enough, you can explore, but you you don't go that far. You don't really get, so we didn't get to, I didn't really see, I, I put a lot of band shit because you're playing with bands and every night you're like, oh, these guys are cool. I remember when I was in Cause for Alarm, we were playing in, um, uh, we were on, playing the East Coast uh, on tour, and uh, everybody was talking about Blood for Blood. I'm like, who's this Blood for Blood? And I and I bought uh, one of their CDs, and I was like, holy shit, this is fucking awesome. Right. And then when we got to Boston, I met some of the guys from Blood for Blood, and I was like, I'm already listening to you guys. Right. And I already knew I already knew this stuff. And I ended up buying a bunch of. We had been playing with Blood for Blood not long after, and I, you know, I bought all kinds of shit off them: shirts, CDs, whatever they had. The, the, the demo. Right. And so, you spend a lot like that, but I never bought any real toys that uh, that I could say I bought food. <laughs> right. I re I really did. I mean, I, I mean, you. I know you've seen Goodfellas, so sure. You, you know, the end of Goodfellas when he says, I'm a regular schnook. Nobody knows who I am. I, uh, I ordered macaroni. I got wet noodles with ketchup. <laughs> that was Arizona in 1994 when I moved here. Different world today, but when I moved here, that's what it was like. So, you know, we were touring uh, in the late 90s. I would buy cases of Cento tomatoes or, or Pastine or, or, or San Marzano. I would buy... Uh, anything that was non-perishable, wise potato chips, tasty cakes. I had a friend for that item or whatever in, all, in, in, in my circle. So we had a guy that liked the wise potato chips. Somebody would buy the tomatoes. So I'd sell the tomatoes. I'd, you know, I'd keep some tomatoes for me. So I would buy our trailer on our van was loaded with bullshit food. But not <laughs> like, but, but food that, like I said, wouldn't go bad because... Right. Taylor, I don't know if you know what Taylor Ham is. Uh, it's it's a pork. It's also called pork roll in New Jersey. It's okay. like a, you slice it, you fry it up with an egg, and <laughs> cheese on a hard roll. 
that's like a New Jersey main staple. Uh, nice. But uh, they don't they didn't have it here, but I, I couldn't. That I would have to fly with. The Saucy Susan was a peach apricot sauce that was really big in New Jersey, almost like a duck sauce. Matter of nice. fact, if you watch Street Trash, when the guy is stealing the food at the grocery store, he, in one of the scenes of Street Trash, he's standing at the uh, uh, one of the shelves, and it has a whole row of, of Saucy Susan right next to him. Nice. Yeah, being a Jersey guy, <laughs> I remember that in that movie right away. Uh, I would buy that stuff and bring it out uh, to Arizona. Nice. And other bands, listen, other people I'm friends with too, and other bands that I brought it for to in Arizona that lived down here, when they went on tour, they started getting saucy. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, How old were you when you moved out of New Jersey? Uh, 18. 18? Yeah, so. Yep. So growing up, how aware were you guys of Jason Voorhees being a New Jersey story, and oh, what was I, that I, like? I that, yeah. And, was and, it? And every and every park was a, was supposedly the park that was uh, was filmed in. You know? <laughs> nice. So nice. that was like I remember we we uh, God, what was the name of this park? I can't remember. One of my dad's uh, friends they had a birthday party for their kid, and. When I was at the birthday party, somebody told me, you know, this is the, this is the camp from Friday the Thirteenth. It wasn't, but uh, <laughs> you know, everybody used to say that all the time. You know, that's that's insane. I I think it's Friday the Thirteenth what taught me that New Jersey has a lot of woods and wilderness. I I don't know. Coming from the Midwest, everything out there is city. New Jersey's a city. It's it's all Hoboken. It's not you know, it ain't yeah. a bunch of wooded area like. Uh, I was surprised to hear about all the bears that are in New Jersey just running around. No, I, we lived we lived in uh, from like fifth grade to my high school. We lived in Hunterdon County, which is really out in the woods from New Jersey. Uh, not anymore, but it's it's they built a lot around there. But I right. could ride my dirt bike to a lot of my friends' houses. Um, you know, I could shoot a gun in the woods behind their house. And nobody really did anything about it. My dad reloaded ammo and all kinds of bullets and stuff. And I used to take the gunpowder and make pipe bombs. <laughs> blow, up, blow up old cars in the woods and stuff. That's you know, great. Uh, it was, I could hunt before school. I would bow hunt, you know, before school and after school. I mean, that's when you know you're, you're living in the country, you know. Yeah, that's for sure. I had a lot of friends growing up that they were hunters. I was never a hunter for some reason. Always got the uh, deer jerky and stuff from him, but I never did do hunting. That's why I hunted. It was not the fact that I enjoyed the hunting. It was that my dad would take the deer over to the butcher, and he would get all kinds of Italian sausage and super sods. And you get that brujur ham, like out of the deer hide. Uh, and and the, forget about the ground meat. We didn't make tacos like crazy. Me and my family oh, right. for sure. taco parties all the time. You know? <laughs> what would you say your favorite line I guess Arnold Schwarzenegger stuff is your favorite stuff to collect right now. Arnold Schwarzenegger is probably my favorite, uh, my favorite figure right now. Yeah, I'm, I, 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 I'm such a fan of those movies. I have a Arnold tattoo from Predator. Oh, nice! Right on. If it bleeds, you can kill it. And then I also have my Rambo knife. So, you know. oh man, first first blood is awesome. What uh? What's do you have a Grail, an Arnold Grail that you don't have that you want in the collection? Yeah. Obviously, I, everybody wants a Conan sword, but oh, I want that. I I don't have. I have I have one of the smaller original uh, Commando figures, but they made a Commando figure that was about this big, that one of my friends has. You have it? Yeah. Uh oh, you're gonna really make me jealous now. Not that I wasn't already jealous by your collection in the background. So this is the one you had? Is that the bigger one? It's hard to tell from over here. Yeah. That's the bigger one, yes. Yeah, yeah. I don't have that. That's the <laughs> holy grail. Yeah, I had a, a buddy of mine. His uh, father-in-law had a auction house or something. He said, hey, I got this. Do you want it? I was like, yeah, I want it. Because I had the smaller one. But I remember yeah. when growing up, my neighbor kids, they had that. 
and I would see them throwing it around like, God damn it. Stop, stop, stop. Yeah. That's my Holy grail. Also, uh, an original turbo man in a box. I would like, I have a turbo man that, uh, Oh, Funko, Funko put it out like two years ago. It was an exclusive through Walmart. Uh, and I got, right I, got I got that one that's in the box. I never took it out of the box, but uh, I, I definitely, but that's not my holy grail. That, that commando is my holy grail. My buddy Brandon has it. He doesn't have the vest on him anymore. It's just Arnold without the shirt. And, and I'm like, when are you going to give me that? Just fucking give me the, give, just give it to me already, will you? Right, right. It's kind of like that 18 inch Dutch you got. You should just give it to me. See, if I wasn't collecting, I would trade you that Dutch for that commando if I wasn't collecting on Schwarzenegger stuff. <laughs> but I'm just That's swapping awesome. out one for the other, you know? Right. So, yeah, uh, that Dutch is a cool one. I have a cool Toys R Us exclusive too that was Arnold and the Predator together in a package. Oh, uh, that's rad. That was a yeah. Toys R Us exclusive that. That uh, I, I obviously some of the Arnold stuff now I'm not taking out of the box, but I I bought a bunch of stuff that was I bought it out of the box on eBay, you know. Right, right. I want to show you though some one toy before we get it go ahead. I got one toy that you're gonna love. So you see this here? Oh, yeah. what is that? Exactly. So I got this some McFarland toys. When they did the Bride of Chucky figure set with Chucky and the Bride, they came with all these little accessories. Uh, originally, they were going to put a baby Chucky in the package. And they decided that the aborted Chucky was probably not the best toy idea. So McFarlane made the prototype of the baby Chucky. That is awesome. And, and, and that was that. When I dumped it off, somebody got it for me. And I had um, Retro Gimmick. I think you follow him uh, online. He yes, has a yes. lot of like toys. Matter of fact, I think he just posted a cool Contra one today. And I was like, dude, you should totally like just buy an Arnold figure and a Rambo figure. And you can just keep repackaging <laughs> that over and over. Right. Anyway, so I had him make this for me. Uh, I sent him the figure. It's the unwanted baby action figure. Orphaned by McFarland Toys. Packaged by Retro Gimmick, Chucky, the unreleased bloody baby prototype. <laughs> that is rad. So it's got me now on this like kick that I want to find more prototypes. Ah. And I want to package them up like this and 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 make a collection of rare, you know, toys repackage. You know, those guys who do all those toys. Those repackaged stuff like Retro Gimmick, uh, that other guy, Death by Toys. I got the I got the fog off of him. Uh, the which, fog, yeah, that's yeah, yeah that was those great. Are great. Those uh, are so. Great. I, yeah, I, I, I'm like, man, there's got to be. So I've been keeping my eye out to try to find some cool, um, you know, because people wind up with these prototypes all the time that don't get used, or even ones that do get used, but they have the original like figure to kind of repackage them in my own packaging and. And start a collection like that. So oh, I wanted to show you that. I kept that to the side for you. And I kept this. I know you get a lot of stuff signed because I, I follow your collection. But I've been uh, I've been getting DHS stuff signed. Oh, nice. I slowed down because it's running out of room for that shit too. But <laughs> look at this one here. So it's got Romero and Tom Savini oh. on this Dawn of the Dead special edition director's cut cover. That's awesome. Uh, I got some cool. I got some other ones. I got Booker from Revenge of the Nerds. He wrote uh, uh, "We've Got Bush," you know, on it. But <laughs> even like funny. recently, all the Revenge of the Nerd guys were here for Mad Monster, and I, I just I didn't spend the money. I could have got a half uh, Taka, Ta, Takaki, whatever his name is. Uh, right. Uh, Carradine was here. Ogre was here, but I wasn't going to spend fifty dollars a guy. It wound up calling me two, three hundred dollars to. Fill up a VHS tape, you know, all in one shot. I was like that with the guys from the thing. Like I didn't know who, because they were all there. I was like, ah, I don't have the money. Uh, I wish I would have got uh, Wilford because he passed away. Yeah, yeah. Or, uh, but I ended up getting uh, David Keith or Keith Dave, uh, Keith, David Keith. Keith. I don't David. know if I would get Wilford Brimley on. Um, if I had Wilford Brimley to sign something, 
I don't know if I would get him to do the thing. I think I would get him to do Remo Williams. Oh, right. I, I thought you were going to say good. You're going to say Kakuna. <laughs> no, no, Remo Williams, the adventure begins. That one, <laughs> that one was a good one. But yeah, nice. I, got, I, got a, I got a new book out. Um, it's called It Blows My Mind. And it's uh, created this character that I guess is kind of me, but I'm trying to make it not be me because <laughs> it's, it's the whole book of things that like this guy Carmine observes and hates. And and it's, it's lists and lists of funny stuff, you know, that, that mo like Monocle. <laughs> Can you imagine someone wore the silly visual accessory and thought their shit didn't stink? Well, it did, and so did Monocle's. You know, but there's a lot of pictures throughout the book um, of Carmine, you know, like, uh, here, let me get a good one for you. This is for not replacing the toilet paper roll. It's weird to do it on the phone because I'm going backwards. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, not replacing the toilet paper roll. It takes about 10 seconds to do, and yet we all can't make the time to replace it. I say we because I'm guilty of this. I had to learn to live with this shame. Maybe you can too. <laughs> a lot of wisdom, a lot of uh, a lot of things that uh, people need to learn. You know, a lot uh, of a lot of get off my lawns. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, standing real close in line, standing right up my ass isn't going to speed up whatever we're both waiting for. So instead of breathing down my neck, why don't you pretend Onyx is here and back the fuck up? Oh man, uh, is that currently available? The book yeah, is out, right? It's available on Amazon. Uh, uh, it's an Amazon Prime eligible, or I have it on my website, uh, uh, totalgavone.com. You can get it over there too. I sell a bunch of uh, shirts on Total Gavone, funny stuff from a lot of movie stuff, like uh, most Italian stuff. But there's like I have a shirt that says like uh, anybody seen Richie, and on the back it says like rest in peace, Bobby Lupo. <laughs> or, or you know, for uh, for justice. Or I have this one's a good seller. I got a, a hat for lethal weapon that just says all it says is diplomatic immunity. You know? <laughs> and, and, but on there, I sell books and stuff, and Northside King stuff, and uh, you know, uh, in this book. So you either go to Amazon or you can get it from me. Either way, it's uh, nice. and, uh, uh, Mick Lambro uh, did the art for the whole book. And uh, he's been doing stuff for Murphy's Law. He did uh, the new shirts on that uh, Agnostic Front Sick of It All tour for Agnostic Front. He's done Sick of It All, Mad Ball, uh, countless album covers for different bands, uh, Slapshot's last album cover. He's, he's a great artist. So uh, we nice. headed off the music and, uh, and we did this book and we're going to work on some more stuff. So there'll be more, there'll be more to come with Carmine. But yeah, it's a fun book. Great stocking stuffer. Awesome. Or a good toilet book. Whatever. <laughs> Take a shit. Read a book. Motherfucker. Man, man I really appreciate you doing this. Uh, collecting is uh, kind of weird because it's so mainstream now. Caught a little shit early on, but now it's I, I'm. It's pretty cool. I don't know how I feel about it. Like, real OGs that collect, I get it, but you know what I mean? So... I'm on my second round of collecting because, like I said, my house primarily burned down and I started over. Um, a few things I, I got through the fire that lived, some figures that I had, a few other things. I mean, there was some stuff that survived, you know, but, you know, I'm still going back and repurchasing shit like this that I had when I was a kid. Oh, right and on. I had to replace after the fire. You know, so right. uh, I, I would say like I'm like a reborn collector, <laughs> but right. I'm not afraid to sell shit either. That's the thing. Uh, a lot of guys that don't want to sell shit, and if I'm like the bobbleheads, I've been selling because I've been buying a lot of these books, and I need more room for the books, and the right. room's overflowing. I'm running out of space. You know, right? I got like very few things around the house outside of this room. Oh, I got shit. a call. That I'm back. I, got, I had a call come through. Uh, I, I have. A, I had a. Uh, I have the Tales from the Crypt artwork that was from the original series. From, oh, nice. Uh, one of the you know when the Crypt Keeper opens his book, 
uh, as a Tonight's Tale. It's one that um, the guy from The Exorcist uh, directed. Uh, the guy who directed The Exorcist. It's got William Tia Career in the episode. They're doing a tattoo. Tattoo comes to life. I had that original oh. artwork, and that's in the house part. But there's not much just out of this room. Okay. Thank you so much for doing this, man. Of course, buddy. Thank you very much. Later. Let's look at this one over here. Oh. Oh. Look at that. I forgot all about that. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> all right, man. Be good. Later.